Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you as I offer words this morning to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. (laughs) There are uh, many stories in the Gospels and in the book of Acts wherein we read about people seeing God through the lens of Jesus Christ. There's the woman at the well, the lepers, the centurion, the eunuch by the roadside, various kings and religious leaders. They see, if you will, the light. They have these aha moments in which they come to understand and see the world differently. Of course, there is the narrative today of the blind man where Jesus makes mud and heals him. So all of a sudden, he can see and know that things are new and being raised up. We know that Paul uh, is uh, a person who is blinded by the light quite literally. And we have the images of light and darkness of blindness and seeing, knowing and being that float through that lesson from Ephesians. And in case you missed it, uh, the book of Samuel tells us quite clearly that humans have a hard time seeing as God sees, as he keeps looking for the next king, right? He keeps like, well, this is it. And God says, nope, wrong, try again, right? Until he gets to the last, a way of seeing that God continues to say that the last and the least shall be first. All of this puts me in mind, which is actually has no benefit to this sermon at all, of Bruce Springsteen's Blinded by the Light. I mean, I just can't. I, I couldn't make it work in this sermon, but I just want you to know that that has been in my head all week long. And a go-kart Mozart was checking out the weather chart to see if it was safe outside. And little early Pearly came by in his curly whirly and asked me if I needed a ride. The calliope crashed to the ground, but she was? Exactly. Revved up like a? Deuce. Another runner in the night. Exactly. Now you all can just join with me. Uh, That is going to be your spiritual lesson for the day. Blinded by the light. It's a powerful metaphor. Paul, of course, in the book of Ephesians, is playing with that idea of blindness and light, seeing Jesus. Uh, In many ways, it echoes, or it's almost like it's a commentary, right, on the passage about the blind man. The author tells the Ephesians that they were once uh, couldn't see. They didn't understand. They had a different vision for the world. They, they understood a different revelation of who God was. But then they came to understand and see who Jesus was and that this changed them. He says they lived in darkness. Now because God has given them grace, because others have witnessed to them uh, God's love and welcome uh, the, through action, you can imagine this happening in action and words, maybe in narrative and storytelling, right, about how God had been part of their lives. They have this capacity now to see a little bit clearer. Of course, Paul uses that image of seeing through uh, a mirror darkly, right, but then having this revelation that he's able to see now uh, so differently. Now, to do the same, which he calls, uh, he says that this is to live now. Once you've had this aha moment, and and let me pause there for a second. I think a lot of us uh, have been convinced, uh, I don't know why, but I think we are, that somehow we're supposed to have this great spiritual aha moment akin to Paul where we're thrown off our horse, knocked out, or whatever. Something big happens. Most of the people I talk to who've come from this, uh, uh, into this revelation from their life, they don't have the aha moment, okay? So I just want 
I need to name that. I need to say that sometimes it's this long process of conversation, uh, sometimes shaking your fist at God, sometimes just sitting silently hoping you're going to hear. Like, it happens in so many different ways. But what Paul is saying here, what the author is saying in Ephesians is, at the point at which you see differently, your life is changed. Being able to comprehend and understand the way of Jesus comes from the saving act of Christ. Of course, that's a Lenten theme, isn't it, right? Trying to understand the gift of the cross while we wait for resurrection on Easter. Our eyes uh, uh, perhaps are lifted up uh, to see the cross before us, or maybe they're open. Uh, The light in our lives are lived as a response, though, always. And I think this is what he's trying to get at uh, here in Ephesians. It's always in response to grace and mercy. We often get this backwards, especially during Lent, I think, right? Because we're like taking on practices of prayer or we're giving up something like chocolate because that's evidently the key to spiritual enlightenment, (laughs) right? But it it messes with our brains a little bit because it, it changes us to think that if we could just do the right things, practice the right way, we'll get this aha moment. But that's not what he's saying. What he's saying is God's grace, love, mercy precedes your very life, your very actions. Anything you do right or wrong, God's love is so abundant that it's bigger. It's bigger than all of that, bigger than our shame, bigger than our failure, bigger than whatever we think we have done that means we don't deserve God's love. No, the message is that God loves us and that it precedes us and that this is the aha moment. This right, this is Wesley's moment on the boat as he listens to the Moravian scene. This is Paul's moment. This is the moment where we go, wow, wow, God loves me no matter what. And with that, we have to set aside kind of a modern religious economic view of God, (laughs) where God will bless me if I do all the right things. Ah, God's blessing you right now all the time. But the light awakens us to a different part of the story. (laughs) It's as if it's there all along running in parallel but we hadn't seen it before. But all of a sudden we go, wow, God's love is there with me all the time. God's presence is there all the time. And the world opens up for us. You are saved (laughs) even before you get baptized, even before confirmation. God's love proceeds everything. It's why we in this church don't care when you get baptized. Get baptized as a baby. Get baptized when you're 70. Doesn't matter. Because God loved you the whole time anyway. You are saved. And therefore, if we think about that, that we are forgiven and receive mercy before we act, God loves us before we act. God seeks us out before we even know how we're to respond, that we can have the possibility of maybe responding as God does. And this is, this is the tricky part. God desires for us to respond to the grace that God gives with grace for one another to respond to the forgiveness God gives before we act with forgiveness, no matter what. (laughs) It's not our forgiveness we're acting in. We're taking hold of the forgiveness of the cross. That's what we offer. My forgiveness will come along, (laughs) sometimes a really long time later, (laughs) to respond with mercy by offering mercy. These are the acts that are pleasing to the God that we believe in. And God's justice 
is all messed up. <laughs> and we should name that instead of trying to fit our justice into a divine scheme of things. God's justice goes like this. For the guilty, God loves. For the prisoner who's on the cross to his right, he forgives and says, I'll see you in heaven. To the sinful, God offers mercy. To the undeserving, love. Sleep or awake, rise from the dead and see. This is a completely different game we're playing. To others, Paul says, be blinded. Be blind, blinded by this light. God actually hopes and desires you'll join in that narrative. Not the narrative of this world, but the one that where people come in to know you and they, they hear your story, they hear your long narrative and they discover in it a little bit of light, a little bit of life and love, a little bit of mercy, and a little bit of forgiveness for themselves. And that's really what we're to offer, lives of light. We will not always get it done. And that's okay. It's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. Because the God we believe in is big enough to love and forgive and to offer mercy for every broken piece of our road. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.